Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, it is 2023. Um, it is good to connect with you all uh, back again here to talk about soccer today. Um, English Premier League um, <clears throat> has resumed after, you know, the exciting World Cup we had um, with Argentina winning the championship. So, yeah, let's get back at let's get back at it um, on soccer and then. Obviously, starting in the next couple of weeks, you know, my other uh, specialty is League of Legends esports uh, DFS. So I'll be making videos about that as well. But for now, let's talk about soccer, which I heavily play with as well. Um, today, it's a Tuesday, um, four game slate. Um, it's a midweek four game slate. So it's interesting. And we'll see how many rotations that each manager will make, um, given that they play twice you know today um tomorrow and then also sometime this weekend depending on what kind of tournaments and qualifications that they have some teams play twice this week so yeah so let's dive in so i'm gonna look at the overview this is what i always look at as my first uh first look um you know so to speak um the, the biggest favorite on the slate is manchester united um they're at home uh, at minus 455 so the menu pieces will be very popular and they should be because Bournemouth um, actually gives up a lot of you know uh, scoring chances and crosses um, and all the peripheral points that you are you look for in the soccer DFS so you want to have some if not a lot of menu pieces today I think um, at least for cash um, for GPP, I mean, I think you can definitely fade Manu. You've seen, we've seen like so many spots where Manu does not perform as expected um, as a big favorite like this. So you can definitely fade them if you want to. But I think for cash or for optimal stuff, I think you definitely want to uh, have some Manu pieces. And then um, I'll dive into each player uh, analysis, my favorite players and my player pool, uh, probably after going through each game, kind of my overall thoughts on each of these games. The second biggest favorite on the slate is Arsenal at home against Newcastle United. Arsenal has been playing really well um, and they're at home, uh, which deservedly gave them the minus 133 uh, odds to win at home against Newcastle United, and they've also been in really, really good form. I think Newcastle has a very good shot at making top five, if not top ten, um, of the EPL this year. Um, Newcastle has been really, really good. So I think this is, oh, I mean, this is going to be a really good match no matter what. But from the DFS standpoint, I think it's going to be a more of an open play game where there will be a lot of goals and scoring chances and assists to go around all, all around both between both teams. Um, so we'll see what happens. Or on the other hand, like I think um, defensively, both teams have been pretty solid as well. So, I mean, there is a good chance that, you know, both teams kind of play more defensively, but I think it's, it really depends on the lineups that they put out. Each manager puts out. And then um, obviously based on that, I'll share my thoughts in the discord for true DFS. Um, but you know, it can go either way, but um, they definitely have the firepower, firepower uh, for both teams to be able to score and, you know, create chances. And then the other two games are kind of like coin flip, um, so to speak. I think um, first, let's talk about Leicester City versus Fulham. I think this is a pure point coin flip, in my opinion. I think Fulham has better shots, in my opinion, even though they're on the road. I don't agree with the odds, but, you know, Leicester City just has been so bad. Um, I think Fulham is going to win this game, um, and I think Fulham will dictate the possession, even on the road. Um, not by much, but I think Fulham is going to be the better, in my opinion, is the better team in this matchup. Um, and it's going to be probably the least popular game to stack, I think, um, or at least popular game from which you know we'll, we'll see ownership of the players you know uh at high and then the last game on the slate is probably my favorite gpp uh play in bha brighton and 
Hove, Albion, um, Everton, in my opinion, is the Leeds of Leeds United of last season. You know, we've notoriously kind of talked about Leeds giving up so many scoring chances and they play in a, such an open fashion on the on the pitch that whoever is playing against Leeds last season scored generally well. Um, and I, I kind of have the same feeling and same uh, sentiment about um, the teams that play against Everton this season. Everton has given up so many crosses and shots and shots on goal and scoring chances, um, so to speak. So I really think BHA is in a really, really prime spot here today. And I'll talk about which players that I like the most from that team. So the biggest favorite, like I said, is Manchester United. Um, we'll get their starting lineups probably 15 minutes after everybody else's um, because the game's at three o'clock. But, you know, we presume that this is probably going to be the projected starting lineup. They've been playing pretty well. I think the manager will probably keep most of the players intact, especially also in this formation. Um, some managers like switch around between formations, but, you know, Manchester United's manager will, knowing him, I think just having seen him in the past, We'll probably keep the same starting lineup and same formation, in my opinion, um, as the last game, except for a few things, few few players, I think. Um, all right. So for Manchester United, the first pieces that I would like to talk about is Bruno Fernandez and then Christian Eriksen. Okay, Bruno Fernandez, even though he's lost his responsibilities on set pieces like corner kicks and free kicks. I mean, he he will take some free kicks, I think, but corner kicks he does is not on there anymore. Um, instead, it's Christian Eriksen who's been who's almost had a monopoly um, on those set pieces. So I think Eriksen is a very sol has a very solid floor. So I, I like him a lot. And then Bruno Fernandez has actually has been in really great form. He's been averaging like one or two scoring chances a game and shots and one or two shots on the on on goal in a, in a game. I think the last three games he's played, he's averaged those. So I think he's in terrific form. I would definitely prioritize those two first, and then close to that is Marcus Rashford, um, who's been scoring nonstop, and he's been, I mean, just in an outrageously good form. So I'll definitely have him at least in one of my lineups. Um, I think he has a very high upside and a prime spot against the biggest, you know, underdog on the mat on the slate. So Fernandez, Erickson, Rashford are the three ones, three players that I would like to target the most um, on the slate. And then Anthony, you know, I mean, he's been in poor form lately, but he definitely has the upside to break the slate. Um, you know, he was a late transfer to Manchester United last season, and he's gotten used to playing with his new teammates. And he has he is an aggressive player where he likes to create chances and likes to take shots. So I can definitely see him um, break the slate. You know, I think if he does end up, you know, he has the he has the skills and talent to score a hat trick on a get on any given slate. So. Um, and then Anthony Martial, I think he's been, he's okay. I mean, he's a striker. So, I mean, likely he could be on the end of a goal or an assist. Um, but I think amongst these five players that I just talked about, he is my least favorite, which naturally makes him a good GPP play from the ownership standpoint. And then um, one last thing I'll talk about Manchester United is Luke Shaw. Um, you know, he, not only started for England and crossed a lot of balls and created a lot of scoring chances for that team. And he naturally does that on the left flank, but last two or three games, he's played a center back position next to Rafael Varane. Well, obviously if, for those of you who've been playing soccer DFS, you know that playing a center back position is not probably the least ideal spot <laughs> for scoring DFS points, fantasy points. So but there is a good chance that Lissandro Martinez um, comes back into the starting rotation after celebrating uh, with Argentina for winning the Cha World Cup championship. Um, he could come in here, which pushes back out Luke Shaw on the left flank. 
And that is probably what Luke Shaw wants to do, just going up and down on the side and Clark crossing the ball. And there is a good chance that he could be on the set of uh, share of set pieces now that we have um, two regular center backs on the team. So, yeah, Shaw is an interesting GPP play, I think. Um, you know, for a defender spot, spot, I think he's definitely a solid play. If you want to pay up a little more than I would like to, because um, he has a higher floor than most other fullbacks or defenders on the slate. Um, but I think just given his role and given the fact that Christian Erickson has been taking the mono almost the monopoly of the set pieces, I don't know if I'll have Luke Shaw at that price, but that naturally is going to, you know, lower his ownership on the slate. And then Juan Bissaka is not, not black play too. I mean, he'll probably average two, three crosses a game, which one of which, you know, could, could end up tied to a scoring chance or score. Um, so that, you know, obviously is a nice, nice play. I won't talk about anybody on Bournemouth because I'm not going to play anybody, but if you were to, and on the biggest underdog, I mean, I don't think you need to go there today, but Lewis Cook would be my favorite. And then maybe like a real cheap fullbacks on this, on the slate. If you need to, uh, you know, save some, if you need to do that for salary relief, feel free to do so. And then, like I said, Arsenal is the second biggest favorite on the slate um, in a marquee matchup against Newcastle United. Um, they've also been in really good form. As you can see, Arsenal is in the first place and the Newcastle is in the third place on the standings when like five wins in a row. You see four wins, one draw for Newcastle. Yeah, so I mean, I think both teams are really good right now. Um Really, we'll see who Arsenal ends up starting, but I assume this is gonna. I presume this is gonna be the same thing too, where Martinelli on the left and Saka on the right, and then I don't know who's gonna start at the top, but it probably is gonna be Tia. Um, and then the fullbacks are interesting for Arsenal as well, but they do not cross as much as the main new fullbacks that I just talked about. So, you know for what it's worth that's what it's what it is i think they're overpriced for their roles and also today going up against like attackers like amaron and jolinton who like to run a lot um i think they're gonna have to sit back a little more than usual um so i don't know if i'll be interested in any of those arsenal fullbacks but the first two pieces like i said for arsenal that i'm interested in are martinelli and Bukayo saka on the flank um, in attack, um, Martinelli and Saka have been in really good form as well. Um, and they're the engine that drives Arsenal along with Martin Odegaard, who I presume he's going to start. I mean, he's he's probably one of another guy, one of one of very few guys that I mentioned, along with Rashford and Bruno Fernandez. Um, Odegaard has been in really, really terrific form. Um, he's been scoring and assisting. Um, on a lot of Arsenal's scoring chances. So Odegaard makes a very good GPP play, probably. I think for cash, you probably have to go with Saka and Martinelli since they have higher floors. But I think those three guys are really what have contributed or what have carried Arsenal to, to the first place on the standings, in my opinion. So Martinelli, Saka, and Odegaard. And if I have to choose like one out of those three, it would probably be Martinelli in my opinion I think he is going up against Kieran Trippier on the other side um, for Newcastle I think that's going to open some space up for Martinelli and then Odegaard should be the lowest owned among those, those three that I just talked about since he does not have a share of set pieces unlike Martinelli and Saka um for Newcastle, I think it's it make they make a terrific, terrific GPP play. Um, they have been playing really well, like I said, but it all starts with Kieran Trippier. Trippier, um, he has a monopoly on all of their set pieces and crosses, and in open play, he crosses a lot as well. So if you think Newcastle will match, if not dictate the possession in this game. Um, I think Trippier is a fantastic play, but I think Arsenal is actually going to dictate the possession. And I don't know if I will be able to pay up for Trippier at that price, given that Newcastle will not have the ball as much as they probably did in, in those other previous games that they just played in and won. 
Um, I don't know if Newcastle is going to be able to win today against a good form Arsenal, but I think Trippier has the highest floor on Newcastle, a slight underdog in this matchup. And then after that, really, it's anybody. I think um, my next piece to target will be Miguel Amaron. Even though he's been in kind of poor form, he can erupt at any time. He has the skills and talent to be able to score more than anybody on this uh, Newcastle team, I think. Even over Callum Wilson, who's been in poor form, in my opinion. So I think I'm going to go Almiron next for GPP and then Bruno Guimaraes. He's been in really good form as well. So I'm going to stick with those three probably and then maybe Jolinton. But, you know, I think going up against Saka... He's going to have to defend quite a bit as well, sit back um, along with the defenders for Newcastle. So, but yeah, those four guys are probably what I'm interested in. Trippier, highest floor. And then for GPP, probably Almiron, Gamarez, and then Jolinton are my favorite guys right there. Callum Wilson should take the the PKs. Maybe Trippier. I don't know. I think Wilson will probably take the PKs. So if you are looking for those like PK equity, penalty kick, Equity. I think Callum Wilson is the player to player to go, um, player to select. Um, and then even, you know, like let's say you I mean it doesn't really Newcastle's goals don't really come with like from the pure strikers. So I'm not necessarily in love with playing Callum Wilson by himself. I think I'm gonna play more of a higher floor guys for Newcastle, like the ones that I just mentioned, like Trippier, Almiron, Gimaras, and Joel Linton. Um, the next one, like I said, my favorite GPP play or stack on option on the slate is Brighton and Hove Albion against the terrible Everton um, on the slate. Um, it all starts with Pascal Gross. He takes all of their set pieces, and he's been in good form. But one downside to him is he is play- he's been playing in the central defensive midfield position here for the team as you can see that limits his goal scoring upside and goal uh scoring chance creating upside so i think for what it's worth um there's that but you know i think gross it has a safer floor um compared to like sally march or karu uh, mitoma who are on the flank here to cross the ball and create scoring chances. And I think they will. I mean, they won't have any issue in doing so against Everton's defense, porous defense, but um, I think they make probably, they may have higher upside than gross, just given where they're playing on the pitch. Um, they will be more advanced in their uh, position to be able to score so I think that they make very interesting GPP play, but I would start with Gross. And then for defense, for the defenders, it's not a very strong slate here today. Um, and Estupinian is one of my favorite uh, defenders to play um, on the slate. So I'm going to have a lot of Estupinian here on the slate. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. But he is my favorite defender of the slate. Um, just given Everton gives up a lot of crosses and a lot of spaces for fullbacks, I think I like Stupinian quite a bit here today. Um, and then for Everton, I think it goes from Gray, McNeil, and then maybe their fullbacks. Um, but that's about it. Like Everton has been really bad. Um, I think Gray has been pretty solid. He scored in the last game, but I think McNeil has been stealing some of the share uh, set pieces as well. So that kind of limits Gray's upside in terms of floor points. But, you know, I think those two are my favorite guys. And Mikolenko and then Patterson are probably the two fullbacks that I would like to target if you are trying to stack Everton. But I'm not sure if I will because I think BHA will dominate possession here today in this game. Last game on the slate is Leicester City versus Fulham. As mentioned, I think Fulham is going to win this matchup. I like Fulham quite a bit here today. Um, Leicester City has been pretty bad um, in the last couple games that I've watched. Um, I mean, they're in the 13th spot. Um, Even though they're at home, I think they're missing key players like James Madison, who is not going to play today. And there's a good chance that um, Tielemans might not play today. 
Um, I think other players have stepped up, like Jose Perez in the last game, um, Dewsbury Hall two games ago. But I just feel like those players, you know, the quality of those players is not as good as the ones that are on the bench or in, or or are injured. Um, I think that definitely affects their flow of the game and their their chances of scoring. Um, I think Fulham will um, dictate the possession in this game, like I said. And my favorite piece is, of course, Alexander Mitrovic. He is a shot-taking machine and sometimes a scoring machine. I think if you think Fulham is going to score more than one or two, um, I, I guarantee that Mitrovic will be at the end of um, of one of those goals, multi goals game, multi goals for Fulham. Um, whether he be assisting or scoring, I, I like Mitrovic a lot, and he has a decent floor actually, given how many shots he likes to take uh, uh, by himself in a game. Um, but after that, it really depends on if you like Pereira versus uh, um, William. They share set pieces, but Pereira has been taking a lot more than William, even though. Ever since Willian joined the team last year, or I guess, I guess, or yeah, last year, um, that Willian has been taking and stealing some of the set pieces that Pereira would have been on. Um, and Pereira ha actually has been in better form compared to Willian uh, the last couple months, I would, a couple weeks at least, a um, couple months, if not. So I like Pereira and pairing up, pairing him up with Mitrovic if you are stacking Fulham. Um, after that, I like their fullbacks as well, more than the fullbacks of Leicester City. Um, Fulham's fullbacks, Kenny Tete and then Anthony Robinson, like to go uh, in advanced positions and cross the ball, which can turn into scoring chances created. Um, so I like them quite a bit. And then Leno actually has been playing pretty well. Um, in the goalkeeping position. I don't talk about many goalkeepers, but Leno actually has been pretty impressive to me. Um, so I would like to play him along with Nick Pope for Newcastle. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. But I don't really talk about goalkeepers because really like with goalkeepers, you play whoever you want and then make sure you don't negatively correlate, you know, uh, with the players, with the rest of your lineup, basically. So whoever fits in your lineup and then make sure if you have like three strikers from Manchester United, you don't want to have Mark Traverse um, in your goalkeeping spot, right? Because you think you're playing through those three guys for those goal scoring upsides. And, you know, more than likely if they would do well, you know, Traverse is not going to do well. So just make sure that they don't negatively co correlate. That's really the secret of playing the goalkeeper on classic slates like this for EPL. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I know this was a little more lengthy than usual, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the contents. Um, if you like the video, if you want me to make more videos like this, please, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the True DFS channel if you can. Otherwise, I'll see you probably tomorrow again. I'll um, have another video tomorrow, given that we have another, let's see, one, two, three, four, a four game slate. So I'll make another video tomorrow morning, noonish again. So, um, so that you will have some, some insights, you know, before the slate. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one. Happy new year. Bye-bye.